All right, you guys, we're doing it. We are doing the big video. We are doing the houseplant tour of 2022, and I am cutting it close. It is the almost the end of December. We are more than halfway through December, and yeah, I have the last one I uploaded was about a year and a half ago, so it's definitely time. So, and this is my fifth time trying to film this. And it's just been a series of things, camera malfunctions, interruptions from the kids, um, yeah, just plant malfunctions, stuff like that. So fifth time's a charm maybe. Um, so yes, I'm just going to be going through all of my house plans. I actually don't know how many I have, so I'm going to be counting as well. And that'll be probably <laughs> like a wake up call for me to stop buying them. So yes, I have been on my like plan journey for a few years now, but I am still a beginner. I live in a basement apartment in a house with three south facing windows, but there's like a patio. So um, yeah, it's like a little bit shaded except for in the evening, which right now it is golden hour. Um, as you will see, I am only going to be talking about my potted plants. I'm not going to be going into depth with propagations I have going right now. But yes, I think we're just going to start with the plants that you first see when you walk in and then kind of go around. This is the first area you see when you walk into my house. This is my cactus and succulent area. Although I do have some cactus and succulents over here and you'll see that I do have one plant over here that is not a succulent or cactus, but actually the first one I guess that you would see is this one. This is my jewel orchid sea turtle and I really love this one. I've had it for, geez, two years? now and it's a very slow grower but this year or in the next year i'm determined to get it more full and then over here is my skindapsis moonlight this is one of the only skindapsis i have because i tend to struggle with them but this one's doing okay i just watered it that's why it still looks kind of curled but i really like this one i really love silver foliage so i'm just happy to have this one here and then I just have this mixed pot of cattle tongue, if I'm saying that right. Also, if I get any names wrong, please let me know. Yeah, there's a variegated one back here and then just some green ones. And yeah, this one's super easy going. This is really my only like mixed plant pot, but yeah, I really like these guys. They're so chill. Uh, this is my mini pitcher plant, which is um struggling to say the least it is very dry here in colorado my like normal temperature or not temperature my normal humidity conditions just like um like out in the open is around 25 to 30 percent so really low um but this one's doing okay like it has new growth here um but the pitchers are struggling a little bit so I might move this one to my cabinet, as you will see later in the video. But yeah, I mean, it's not dying. I've had it for a few months and it's not dead, so there you go. Um, this is my pinecone cactus that got beheaded accidentally. And I feel like I'm going to lose the main part of this plant because it is squishy. But the part that fell off is doing okay, I think, and you'll see that in a second. But yeah, I don't know what'll happen with that one. I'm really sad that I got beheaded, but it's okay. And then my string of pearls, just the normal green version. I got these grow lights that I have on it specifically for my string of things because I really enjoy them. But um, yeah, they uh, they definitely needed more light. I was just getting a ton of like tiny pearls, so it's been growing a lot better and getting more full ever since I added the grow light. This is, I think this is some sort of jade plant. It's just like a jade succulent. And these ones are really cool. It looks like coral to me. And I really enjoy having this one. My sister gave it to me. It's just really cool looking and like 
has like little hollow spots and it gets sun stressed with that like pretty purple. This is the head of the pine cone cactus that fell off and this one is doing a lot better than the other one. So I feel like this one's going to live and the other one's not going to, which is okay. That might be why it dropped it is because like the body couldn't support it. And this is my string of turtles. And these are just a few cuttings. This isn't really a full plant yet, obviously. It's just a few cuttings, but they are growing. And I just love how cute like the baby ones are. This is Echeveria agavoids, I believe. It's just like a big um, succulent. This one is loving the grow light. It is. It has so much new growth. Yeah, it has so much new growth coming in from the middle, which is really exciting. And this one is just like a whole vibe with the planter and everything. This one's really funky. This one is my pride and joy. This is my booby cactus that I unboxed in a recent video. And it's doing really well here. It is enjoying the grow lights. It is slowly growing at the top. So super exciting. Definitely one of my favorites of this year. I have a variegated string of pearls um really cool i'm fairly new as you'll see a lot of these plants are i am getting back into this hobby so a lot of these are new but this one's doing really well it's starting to fill out all of that new growth as you can see and this one's pretty close to the grow light um so that i could keep the variegation and it seems to enjoy it this one is a hoya carii which I think this is the kind that doesn't grow more than one leaf, which is okay because this is a whole vibe by itself. And this one's super cute. I don't really know like what this is. It's definitely like a cactus, obviously. Um, if I find the name, I'll like put it right here, but I cannot remember off the top of my head. This one is a um, fishbone cactus, which is growing like a beast. This is new. This is new. Um, yeah, the, I, this plant is just like constantly rewarding me with new growth, which is really fun. And it gets sun stressed, as you can see. I love cacti and succulents. I used to really struggle with them, but now I feel like I'm kind of getting the hang of it. Back here, this is my Ripsalis or a mistletoe cactus. And this one's really cool. It looks like a uh, coral as well. And this one's super easy and gives me new growth all the time. So... Yeah, I really love this one. Came in a cute planter. I think this one was a clearance plant, even though it was like totally fine. Uh, so I, of course, snatched it up and it really likes it here. Okay, and then maybe I'll just pull these out because I'm struggling. This one is, I do not remember the official name, but I think it's like a stain. There we go. I think this is like a stained glass succulent um, because the leaves... Um, can look like stained glass, which is really cool. This one's growing like a beast, too. <laughs> um, even though it looks not as compact as I'd like it to, it's still really cool looking, and I really enjoy this one. This is my bear paw, which is definitely one of my favorites. I love this thing. It is so cute and sweet and is really loving the grow lights. I think I want to give this one a chop, though, um, just in the leggy parts. But, yeah, the bottoms are starting to fill out really nicely. Oh, there's a baby in there. Yeah, I really love this one, and is so easy to take care of. This is my, if you saw my last <laughs> plant tour, this was in it and this one hasn't grown much since last year. So, uh, but yeah, the spike is definitely bigger if you did see my last plant tour, but this is my Sansevieria cylindrica, I believe. Um, really cool, really chill. And this is one of the OGs. I've had this one for years. It was definitely one of the first ones that I got when I started my plant journey. And I'm so happy that it's still here. Okay, and then we've got a string of bananas cutting right here. This is the first time I've ever owned one. And it's doing well. It hasn't really done much, to be honest, in my care. But <laughs> it is winter here, so we'll see. And then I have a Calenco, which is all that remains of the mother plant that I gave my mom and then it perished in her care and my care. <laughs> so this is all that remains and it's super leggy so I might end up cutting it and then planting the cuttings back into the soil just so it's more compact but this one uh, sun stress is really pretty and I'm glad that I still have a little piece of it. And then I'm not gonna touch this one because it is quite fragile but this is my burrow's tail succulent and um, it is, as I touch it, gosh, what is wrong with me? 
Um, yeah, it's doing really well here. As you can see, it like did have points where it, I think it just wasn't getting enough light and it really is enjoying these grow lights. As you can see, all the ends have um, new growth, which is really fun. And I just love this one um, starting to fill out in vine. And it probably needs a repot, but I'm just so scared to like watch the beans fall. But I don't know, we'll see. Maybe I'll make that a video. This is the cactus and succulent area. Very beautiful. Okay, and then here are the other two south facing windows. And as you can see, it's golden hour right now and it's gonna be super backlit. So I'm gonna try my best to get good shots for you guys. <sighs> okay. See, like that looks like nothing. This is the newest plant in my collection. This is a, oh gosh, a shingle vine or a Raphidophora hayi, I think if I'm saying hayi, hayi. And I just got this at a big box store and it's double sided, which I hate because obviously the light's coming from one direction. So um, I'm gonna have to probably, uh, either put this in the cabinet where it will get light on both sides or um, take off one of the sides and start a different plank with it so that they're both facing the light. But this one's really cool. This is my first shingle plant and I've only had it a few days, so I cannot take credit for this new growth, but hopefully it'll take off in my care. I love my tetrasperma right there, so I definitely needed another Raphidophora to try out. And I really love the look of shingle plants. They're so cool. I love how flat they are, so... I'm super excited to give this one a shot. Next to that is my Monstera Peru. This is my pride and joy. I recently hauled this, but since then it has just taken off for me, which is crazy because this obviously gets direct sunlight, which a lot of plants don't love. Um, and this window has a cold draft. But despite that, it just really likes it here. I don't know if you can see like all the new growth um happening and yeah it's just really pretty and i really like this one i really am loving monsteras um i was kind of put off by the deliciosas as you'll see i struggle with the deliciosa but i'm really liking the peru look at that that is so beautiful this is the mother plant of my palia pepper moides i'll pull it down i'll pull down the baby too so these are my Palea pepper moides, and I will admit I struggle with this plant. I do not think it's a beginner plant at all, but maybe I'm just doing something wrong. I will say I, I should try harder because it is in the shitty soil that I used to use before I knew anything. <laughs> and I feel like it doesn't like being in a pot with a ton of room. So I might combine these as well because um, I think they like being cramped more, but it's growing. It's always growing, but it's also losing leaves at the bottom all the time. So I'm not really sure what that is about. So I think a whole, like a whole new soil situation, um, like new pot and then putting these together will help them just like be buddies and I don't know. Here is my air plant. I will put the scientific name here, but this is my only air plant right now. Um, I totally forgot about my smaller ones and they died, but I got this. This one is so hardy. I've literally left it alone for months and it's been totally fine. Um, I just like uh, submerge it in water for like half an hour, probably like every month. It, pr it would probably prefer um, more frequent waterings, but yeah, sometimes I just forget. I got this one as a Mother's Day gift and I really like it. It's so cool. And I definitely want more air plants. This is my philodendron Birkin. And I don't know, for a while this one wasn't doing anything for me. And now it's finally putting out leaves. This is one of the newest leaves. And that's so pretty. All the new leaves are getting like a lot of white, which I really like. And oh, there's a new leaf. Which is really exciting. I'm glad it's finally taking off for me. And I would love to see this one like really big too. Okay, and then being overpowered by the jade is my sad little monster Adansonii. I struggle with this plant as well, but I think I'm finally getting the hang of it. 
<laughs> I've always struggled with this one, but like I said, drafty window and it would probably appreciate um, more indirect sun. So I don't know, I guess I could be trying harder. Maybe I should do that. This is my crazy looking jade tree. I don't know if they're called jade trees, but my jade. And um, this is one of the OGs on my channel as well. And it looks a lot different than it did a year and a half ago, which is cool. And out of nowhere, it's taking off for me again. It's like filling in where it was blank, which is really fun. This plant's super easy and sun stress is really pretty. If you can see those spots and kind of like the coloration, that is sun stressing. And this plant's really cool. I definitely recommend for anyone who struggles with like seeing signs of when a plant needs to be watered, this one will get wrinkly in the leaves and that'll tell you to water it. This is my Hoya Compacta and I think I'm finally getting the hang of this one as well. This one is finally taking off for me. I was definitely watering it like a succulent. Like I was like kind of rarely watering it, but I think it appreciates it um, with more frequent waterings in my opinion. Like I said, it's so dry here. I would love to have the variegated version once I master the normal green version. And then, and then I just have a lemon lime philodendron that has not done much for me yet, but that's okay because I think it'll get there once it gets warmer here. That is it for that window. And then over here is propagation. So I'm just gonna be talking like here to here. This window is not drafty. I don't know why that one is, but this one is not. And I just have an aloe here. This one's really crazy looking. This was a gift for my sister and I think it likes it here. I'm not really sure. It hasn't done very much, but I struggle with aloe and that's why my sister gave it to me so I could try it again. <laughs> so we'll see. This is just a skull terrarium with like Spanish moss in it and like a crystal and stuff. Not much going on in there. This is a baby philodendron xanadu that probably wants more humidity. I hate these tiny pods because they dry out so quickly. So I might be moving that. Um, this is another jade variety that I'm not sure what it is, but uh, I really like it. Um, it was really sad for a while in my care, and then I think this one enjoys more frequent waterings just because the stems are like the, yeah, the stems are like thinner. So I'm getting the hang of it, and I really like the variegation on this one. It's really pretty. And then behind that is uh, Miss Itty Bitty. <laughs> uh, this is my Peperomia Hope. This is the only Peperomia I think I have besides my string of turtles. But yeah, super cute, and I really like this one. It's actually growing very slowly for me, but it might be because the pot is so small. If you saw my plant tour last year, you'd see that my ZZ Zenzi was doing a lot better than it is right now. And this one is kind of, I think this one had um, thrips, I think. I think it had some kind of pest. I just saw like general damage uh, and then I treated it only once and it's doing a lot better. So yeah, it's giving me this little baby down here, which is really fun, but I really want to see this one come back. I really want to work hard on all the plants that I struggle with, um, in the next year so that I can get them back to their full glory. And then this is my one and only Transcendentia, just the white and green version. And I recently got this as the first one I've ever had. So we'll see. Um, but I just, I just love, I wish it would show like how shimmery it is. I don't know if you can see that, but it's like shimmery and the white and green is just so pretty. It's like one of my favorite color combinations and this one seems to be okay here. So I'm really happy that it's here and it has like a few pups and like offshoots coming off. So that's super exciting. Here is my, I'm just going to pull all these down. This is my Hoya Macrophylla, I think, varig variegata, variegated version. Because it has like a little bit of white, I'm not sure. If the normal green version has white in it too, like let me know. But yeah, Hoya Macrophylla. And this one's super slow growing for me too, but I just love the texture so much. I think it's so interesting and I would love to have more Hoya in my collection. 
moving on to my favorite Hoya. This is, there we go, my Hoya Shepardii, which has not done anything for me since I hauled it, uh, but that's okay because I just love how funky it is and I really hope it grows for me soon. <laughs> And I just have it on like this cute candle holder with like these little sun crystal, like sun catcher crystals. Okay, this one's gonna be hard to show, so I'm definitely gonna pull this one down. Okay, I think this is a Sansevieria Bacularis. It's just like, or a Cylindrica. It's just like a one big long spike, which is really cool. This one's just chilling. It just like does its thing. I haven't noticed it growing really, but yeah, it just does its thing. And again, I love funky looking plants. So hopefully eventually I'll get a spike. And then we just have another Hoya here. I think this is just a Hoya Carnosa, but it's so cute. It's so small. It's just a little baby. I love this one. Okay, and then like I said, I just have propagations over here which I will be moving soon so I can fit more plants here. But that's the second window. Oh gosh, I have a lot of plants. And then I have like um, like some hanging baskets up here. So this one is just a neon pothos, which I really enjoy. And this one is growing quite long. So I hit my head on it now. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna be taking cuttings of that soon as well, but um, super easy and is next to the heat vent and it doesn't really even care that it's like super dry here <laughs> but yeah, just really beautiful I really love the foliage on this one and the color I'm very drawn to like neon uh, plants as well there okay I think that's better this is my Hoya Carnosa that I'm very proud of and even though it's like losing some variegation in the new growth um it has sized up really nicely for me like this is uh, let me show you like the size this is like the size of the old leaves right here and then one of the more like recent leaves like look how much bigger that is that is so cool but i'm hoping i get the variegation back some of the new growth like has the variegation some doesn't so it might just be like a you know like different um like genes mixed into here but yeah this one um had mold growing in it even though i like to keep it more on the dry side so i did like an emergency repot and so it has like my fresh soil mix now and it has this cute tendril like going up the the hanger and this one will eventually wrap around as well which is super cute and i actually have like the tiniest leaves I've ever seen coming out. That is so much fun. But yeah, I love this one. It's definitely one of my favorites. Up here is just a green pothos, which is doing pretty well. It looks basically the same as it did last year. It looks a little bit longer, but yeah, this one um, thrives on neglect and that's basically what I've given it this year. So that's why um, it definitely could be doing better, but it's getting there. This is my Marble Queen pothos which looks basically the same as last year. <laughs> um, this one was struggling to reach the light. It's kind of reverted back here, if you can see. And so I'm trying to like make it more even, but you see, look how beautiful the variegation is. I really should give this plant more love. Look at that one. Oh, wow. That's so pretty. Oh, see, I'm like, I don't appreciate you enough because you're up here. Look at that. That's so pretty. This is my Hartley philodendron, just the normal green, which I recently chopped in my plant chores video, and it's doing awesome. I get multiple leaves every day, and this one, the heat vent points directly at it, so I do have to water this one more often. It looks like it could use water right now, and I'm trying to have it fill in in that bald spot, <laughs> but I have a bunch of propagations going so I can fill in that bald spot. In the center is my massive Raptophora tetrasperma, which I recently got at a greenhouse. Uh, like it was like a greenhouse open house. And I got this big thing for like 12 bucks, which was insane. And here it 
Here's what the other side looks like. This plant is definitely gonna need a makeover. It is crazy and I feel like the trellis isn't even doing anything. So for Christmas, I asked for like a pack of trellises so that I can really have it climb. But yeah, it's doing really well. It gets new leaves all the time. Here's one of the new leaves and another one coming out. The leaves are coming in quite smaller, um, but it is winter and so light is a little bit more limited here. And then one of the new ones I got, which is, I don't, I need to find a spot for it because I wasn't expecting it to be so big, is my philodendron squamif, oh my gosh, <laughs> is my <sighs> philodendron squamiferum or squami, which is easier to say. <laughs> I got this one from Plant Haven Toronto uh, recently and I need to find a spot for it because yeah i don't know it's just, it's just bigger than i thought it'd be but i am seriously obsessed with the fuzzy petioles there we go yeah, look how pretty that is look at those fuzzy petioles and it has um two new growth points i don't know if these will be leaves because i've never had this plant before so we'll see but yeah i'm really enjoying like the shape of the leaf oh, that is just so cool here's another one that is so cool. Yeah, those are the only two I have on the table right now. So these are my, gosh, <laughs> these look terrible. Um, these are my two Monstera Deliciosas that looked a lot better in last year's video. And guys, I honestly don't really know what's going on. The leaves are coming in small and not fenestrated. It's still growing a lot. Like, as you can see, there's like multiple leaves coming in but they're coming in super small and it gets i feel like it gets pretty good light it gets the exact same light that it did last year and it was doing totally fine last year so i don't know if it's pests i don't know if the soil is just like gone bad or something but this is what they look like i don't know what to do this i feel like this these need uh like a makeover so if anyone has any tips please let me know this is my uh alocasia yucatan princess i think that's how you say it and this one is fairly new as well but it really likes this spot it has like a bunch of babies under here which is so much fun and this one's just like a statement like she's just pulling everything together although we do run into this one a lot because it's right by the bathroom door but just look at that oh i should take a picture of this plant it looks so nice right now this is my alocasia silver dragon and I'm gonna be honest, I struggle with this plant. I think it doesn't get enough light besides like golden hour right now. So I think I'm gonna be getting grow lights for this area because I really care about these plants in this spot. But can we just appreciate that? Wow. It's just really stunning no matter what. But yeah, I'm struggling a little bit. <laughs> this is a bunch of philodendron micans cuttings that I recently, like today, put a, like all together. I cannot talk today. Um, yeah, I don't know, it looks quite um, sad in my opinion, but I think it'll do a lot better once I just like pay attention to it a little bit more. All the cuttings were in like really small pots and so they were drying out really quickly. That's why it looks kind of sad, but I have hope for it. I really do. I have struggled with this plant in the past, but like I said, I was definitely less knowledgeable of what to do. So we'll see what happens with this guy. Next is my begonia. This is my only begonia. This is my begonia gray feather. And this one is seriously the love of my life. I am obsessed with it. It has a new leaf coming in right here, which is so cool. I've never owned a begonia. And so like the way the leaf came out is just a, like such a cool surprise to me. But it has a few leaves coming in, which is really cool. But yeah, I really love this plant. I definitely want to like give it the best care I possibly can. <laughs> oh, and the back of the leaves get like red a little bit, which is really cool. And then my third Monstera Deliciosa, basically doing the same as the other ones. This is actually probably the best looking one. It has like the biggest new leaves, but still no fenestrations. It hasn't for a while, as you can see. So I don't even know, you guys. I don't even know what to do. And then down here is just a green pothos, like a massive one. This is like many plants put together. 
Um, this one's really cool, definitely like a nice space filler if you need to fill like a large area with some foliage. There had to be at least one sad plant in this. This is my ponytail palm and it recently got beheaded. I pulled off all the leaves because they were all, um, I think this has root rot. So I'm gonna have to do like a rescue on this plant as well because I really like this plant and I would like it to see, I would like to see it come back in full swing. My Calathea Zabrina, this one also came from the greenhouse open house and this one's really beautiful. Um, it has some new leaves. I'm very surprised that this is doing okay despite the Colorado dryness, even with the humidifier, I'm just very surprised that it's really doing anything at this point, but it's alive. It's it's alive, which is all I could ever ask for. And then squished back here is my ZZ Raven, which this one was in my plant chores video too. I repotted it. These are super dusty. Oh my gosh. Um, but this one's super cool. It's It would probably appreciate a better spot, but this is what I have for now. And it doesn't seem to mind it yet. So I'm just going to keep it there until it fusses. And then next to that is my um, my Baltic Blue Pothos, which I had never heard about this plant until I saw it, obviously. And this plant is so cool because it fenestrates. <gasps> Look at that, that is so cool. There's probably a better leaf I could show. Yeah, it fenestrates, which is so cool that it's like, I should really give this a moss pole or something to, to have it really take off because I, I love fenestrated plants. This is an overview of this planty area. This is another planty area. <laughs> As you can see, I like to cram a lot of plants into a small apartment. As do a lot of people, don't judge me. Um, okay, I guess we'll just start. These are prop boxes, so again, I'm not gonna get into that, but this is my philodendron Xanadu which I really missed having this plant. I had it and then I, or let's see, when did I have it? Probably a few years ago and then I repot it and it hated it and then it died. So this one is definitely a little bit more snug in its pot. And this one will probably always be like an all time favorite philodendron of mine. It's just so unique looking and I don't think it gets enough love. This was sold to me as a, an obliqua, an, a Monstera obliqua. And I just really don't think it is because definitely for like the price I got it at um, and how like many there were, I heard that the obliquas are really hard to come by. So I think this is just an Adansonii. So that's what I'm gonna call it. <laughs> this is my Monstera Adansonii, which is on a moss pole. And this one's doing a lot better than my other one over there. So I don't know if that one over there was just like, I don't know, like bad genes or whatever, or just like a bad past, but. Yeah, this one's doing a lot better. It has um, new leaves coming in. It has one unfurling right there, which is really cool looking. And I'm, I'm really happy to finally get a hang of that plant. Um, what are you? Ooh, I don't actually know what this is, but it's definitely like a Hoya. It might just be like, a, I don't know. This might just be like a Carnosa again. But yeah, super cute. I love the splashiness in Hoyas. And then Propagations. And then a Peace Lily, which is another one my sister gave me because I usually don't like these and as do a lot of people, but I'm gonna try it again and it hasn't died so far. So we're basically at like record time for keeping this alive. Uh, this is my String of Hearts in this little like booby um, planter that I painted that I need to repaint, but um, let me just pull it down. Yeah, um, pretty sparse, but we're working on it. The length is getting there. I am actually going to be propagating this right here um, so that I can fill it in more and so I can get rid of like this ugly blank spot. So stay tuned for that. This is another Hoya that I'm not really sure what it is. It might be like a pubic calyx or something like that. Um, I feel like I won't really know for sure until it blooms, if it ever does. So, but yeah, just a, just a really cute Hoya. And this is a new leaf. Yeah, that one. There's a new leaf right there. 
This one's growing pretty good, which is really nice. And then Philodendron Brazil. I actually kind of struggle with this one. It's weird. I always see like massive pots of these for people and I just kind of struggle with mine. Um, but it is growing, so I cannot complain. And um, this leaf has like the weirdest variegation in it. I love it. It's so cool. I really love this plant. It's definitely like an all-time favorite of mine, even though it doesn't love me. It looks there's like a random just all neon leaf. That is so cool. Okay, and then just another heart leaf philodendron, just the normal green one. Like I said, like this one's like a nice um, space filler, and it's kind of climbing up and trailing down, which is really cool. And then next to that is a another Sansevieria type. I'm not really sure which one this is, but it's super chill, super easy. And then I'm gonna have a Skindapsis. Uh, I'm not really sure which one it is because I don't even know if it's gonna make it. <laughs> it kind of looks like a moonlight, to be honest. Like the color just looks like another moonlight, but I don't know if this one's gonna make it. Up here is my Philodendron Gold Cellum, which had a new, a new leaf coming in and then it got stuck and I messed with it and it broke. So we have two leaves right now and it looks like this one is about to go out. So that's great. This is my Philodendron Silver Sword. And I honestly was really nervous to get this one just because, I don't know, I was just really nervous to have like less common plants. I guess they're pretty common now, but I was just really nervous. And this is the new leaf in my care. And it has, um, I don't know if you'll be able to see, it has like another one coming out right there and another growth point right there. So I must be doing something right. I know it'll pr appreciate this moss pole. I just put it on even though I hate these moss poles and I will be switching eventually. It'll work for now, but yes, look at this beautiful new leaf. I can't wait for it to get um, its more mature shape. You need water. I'm going to keep you out. Next to that is probably one of my favorites which is so surprising because this is a Calathea. This is a Calathea vitata and it loves it here. I literally have it in like, um, just like household conditions. Obviously I have no humidifiers even running in that spot and it is just pushing out growth like nothing in like 30% humidity and kind of far away from the window to be honest. And it's just giving me new leaf after new leaf and it really likes it here which makes me so happy and it's really made me like want to try again with Calathea because look at that look at that this is a, one of the new leaves definitely one of my favorites um of this year but possibly all time because look at that oh my gosh and so like full and bushy oh, i just love this one last on that shelf right there next to the calathea is some sort of philodendron i'm not sure what this is um if anyone like wants to help me out this is like one of the more um what am i trying to say unique leaf shapes i don't know if that helps in like identifying it this is its new leaf in my care which is definitely smaller than the other ones, but that's definitely due to like the transferring when I brought it home. And then it has a new leaf right there coming in, which is pretty cool. I really like this one, no matter what it is. Um, up here, I just have another green pothos, which <laughs> looks really crazy on camera. It's just like trailing down um, my kitchen cabinet. So I'm gonna be chopping this one too and making it more full at the top because it definitely has a bald spot due to my lack of care. <laughs> Here's kind of the last planty area before my cabinet. So we have a green ivy. I don't really know like the name again. I'll put it here if I know it. But this one is, I got this one as a clearance plant. I was like, there's no way it's going to make it because like the lack of humidity or whatever. It's growing a lot for me and I really I'm enjoying ivy. I'm like excited to try again with these. And yeah, this one's just like really dainty and pretty. Really nice spot filler as well. Um, I'm not really sure what this one is. <laughs> I forget every time my sister tells me, but it doesn't even like it here, so it's fine. It has a new leaf coming in, if you can see that. 
but the existing leaves like hate it here so I I don't know I've seriously tried everything and then I have a bromeliad which was a rescue plant um, my sister my other sister moved to Colorado and was gifted this as like a housewarming gift and she <laughs> claims that she does not have a green thumb so I took it in and it looks a little bit better than when um than when she first had it so I don't know if I'm doing anything right <laughs> I'm not really doing anything to it and it's getting kind of like I don't know what this is called bolting I think it's bolting but I don't even know back here is just my lucky bamboo I've had this one for a really long time it was on my channel last year and it's just chilling it's just doing its thing and this one really took a beating last year and it's finally forgiven me which is nice um back here i have a gold dust dracaena which looks like it's not happy here as well i'm not really sure what to do about this one but it's kind of like if it died it'd be like whatever i <laughs> have my syngonium batik which i am very excited to have in my care and take care of this one's fairly new and yeah i just love this little guy and then this is like just like a variegated um ivy which is not really doing much for me yet but i think it's still like getting settled in here and then right here i have my money tree like shoved in this little spot and i I did not think I would like this plant, you guys. My sister just like gave it to me and I was like, yeah, I'll take it, but you know, I probably won't love it. I love it. It's so much fun. Look at that. Look and look at the baby. Look at the little baby coming in. Oh my gosh. That's so much fun. And then also squished in here is a spider plant. This is all that survived of my big spider plant from last year. It's whatever, it'll be fine. But yeah, it definitely uh, took a beating as well. And then I just have another giant pot of green pothos. It looks like there's like a few golden pothos cuttings in there as well. But this one's trailing really nicely as well. I love how like big and bushy it looks right here. All right, you guys, I promise we're at the end. This is the last planty area. <sighs> I told you I had a lot and I'm gonna count and I'm gonna be surprised and probably disappointed in myself that i have so many so this is my syngonium elbow which lost its other leaf if you saw me haul this in my cutting haul and i just really want it to grow really well for me so that's why it's in here oh if anyone's wondering like like the temperature and humidity i have going in here right now it's usually not 70 it's usually like 60 but my fan is off so um, yeah, and then my alocasia stingray, which is not in the one leaf alocasia club, which is awesome. This is the third leaf coming in, the first leaf in my care, which is really exciting because I used to be really bad at alocasias and now I'm doing it. <laughs> um, I think my alocasia actually has some spore variegation as well. You see that? Look at that. That's so cool. It's always fun to see, uh, um, like a little variegation spot. And then this, if you've seen any of my latest videos, I thought this was an alocasia longiloba, but now I think it's an alocasia pink dragon because, ouch, <laughs> because the stems are pink. It's like hard to see, but they are pink. So I think it's a pink dragon. I don't know. It's another alocasia. This one's really cool. I had to give this one a big chop. It had a bunch of like weird looking leaves. So it's kind of bald right now, but I think it'll be totally fine in here. This is actually not my plant. This is my sister's plant because she is going to be converting a cabinet soon, but got a white princess, philodendron white princess and wanted me to take care of it until then in the cabinet. So of course I said yes. Um, this is the newest leaf. It's like changing color right now, which is really cool. I can tell it's going to have like a ton of minty variegation, which is really cool. But, um, wow. So like, just look at that. This is just so cool. We, we got these, um, at that greenhouse open house 
for a really good deal which is really exciting to even have one and we both thought that we got white wizards but hers is a princess and mine is a wizard which you'll see in a second next to that is my alocasia dragon scale which is easily one of my favorite plants in the whole world because holy moly look at that look at that and this one only has three leaves right now but i really feel like i'm gonna get a new one soon especially in these conditions so stay tuned for updates but just so stunning and then this is ooh, my pink princess okay i think this is my pink princess that we got at the open house as well and this is its newest leaf oh it has more leaves I, this is the first time i'm seeing this cool this one has minimal variegation as you can see right there but that's okay because it went through a lot <laughs> like um like buying it and transferring it in the cabinet and trying to get the cabinet all figured out so yeah it's been through a lot i'm not mad at the variegation but i'm excited to see like what it has in store this is probably the most variegated leaf it has like it's not showing up on camera but it's like really hot pink that stripe up there and then this is my sister's pink princess that I am taking care of for her. And again, you know, just like minimal variegation. But that's okay because this one has a new leaf coming in as well. And then back here, it's kind of hard to see. Maybe I should pull it out. This is my white, my philodendron white wizard. Which is really cool. Has so much water pulling. Um, and this is the newest leaf. Again, minimal variegation, same reasons, but looks like there's going to be a little bit of like mintiness in it, which is really exciting. I'll take anything I can get, but um, having every leaf look like this would be an absolute dream. But even like the mintiness, oh, I just love that. That is so beautiful. This is just an Alocasia um, Ivory Coast corm that I am trying to... It had a leaf and then it rotted, but the corm was fine, so... Uh, yeah, I'm trying to like bring this one back to life, so that's why it's in there. This is my my Philodendron Milano Chrysum, which I am so excited to have in my possession, but also really scared because these are super <coughs> these are super finicky, I've heard. So we'll see, but we've got a new leaf coming in and the leaf i am really hoping like doesn't get stuck <laughs> like how they always do i've heard so we'll see and then my monstera siltipicana this one was a free um plant that i got with my plant haven toronto order which is really exciting it is going to lose this leaf from transit which is okay other than that it looks totally fine and i heard that these are really easy growers so i'm not worried about it all but yeah i'm just really excited to have this one my probably most exciting and probably most uncommon plant hello is my alocasia jacqueline which I got at Plant Haven Toronto as well, and I am monitoring this one like, like a helicopter parent. <laughs> I really want this to grow for me. I'm actually very nervous to have it in my collection, but I think it'll be totally fine in the cabinet conditions. And this has been a wishlist plant for a very long time, and now I finally have it. It's so nice to have here. It's just really fun. And yeah, it just lives in this little spot in the cabinet. And this is an overview of the cabinet. Quite crowded, of course. Yeah, definitely like tall enough to have like moss poles and stuff. I just went around and counted all my plants, not including the propagations or my sister's plants, those two plants in the cabinet. And I am shocked to say the least. I have 94 plants in this space, in like just this space, because I have no windows in the bathroom. I have a window in my bedroom, but it's in a window well and it's north facing, so it's basically like dark in there all day. Um, so there's no plants in there. They're all just like what I showed you out here. 94? Oh my gosh, I didn't even count the ones on the table. 96. 
oh, like, I don't know whether to be, like, embarrassed or, like, happy. Like, this is the life I've always wanted, but, like, saying you have 96 plants to someone who's not, like, planty is, like, bitch you crazy. Um, <laughs> I don't know, to me it's kind of exciting. Now it's, like, a jungle. Like, I already knew it was a jungle, but I just see it, like, with, like, a different perspective. Like, oh, there's there's 94 of you guys in here. Cool, cool. This video has definitely been long enough. I'm sorry that it is probably going to be so long. Thank you guys for sticking around if you did stick around through the whole thing. Um, if you want to support me for free, just like it and subscribe. If you want to see more plant content and occasional lifestyle content. And, yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!